Shout out to our sponsor, Movement Watches. Get multiple watches in one with bands you can switch out for a whole new look. Because hey, who needs a whole new watch for every occasion? That's dumb. Get 15% off your entire purchase at mvmtwatches.com slash the know. You can be fancy like us. That's right! Welcome to The Now, I'm Ashley Jenkins. I'm Meg Turney. This week marks a very special anniversary in the world of gaming, although not every anniversary is necessarily a good one. It's now officially been 10 years since the first announcement of Half-Life 2 Episode 3, which is quite honestly just painful to say. Wow, Lord Gabriel, why have you forsaken us like this? 10 years is the aluminum or aluminium, depending on how you want to pronounce it, 10 anniversary if any of you feel like sending Gabe Newell a special gift. Don't do that, just don't, he thinks it's weird. Oh, what if your crowbar's made of tin and he was waiting all this time? That would make it really ineffective. Yeah, it really would. <laughs> Episode three could be subtitled Gordon Freeman's Vaporware at this point, but for all the waiting that we've had to do, of course. Yeah, but I had to take any title at this point. Yeah. meant that we got it. The game first made its debut in the form of a press release from May 22nd, 2006, and now has become a very infamous part of our gaming culture. This aluminum, or however you want to pronounce it, anniversary has put Half-Life 2 Episode 3 back on everybody's minds, and for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, so naturally we're digging through the archives to find what Valve has actually confirmed about the still painfully non-existent game, and comparing its timeline to other games that may have taken just as long or longer. Wow, this anniversary party is starting to feel more like a wake. Starting back in 2006, the press release that first mentioned Episode 3 wasn't totally devoted to it, but rather meant to celebrate Episode 1 going gold, saying, Episode 1 is the first in a trilogy of episodes that will conclude by Christmas of 2007. Christmas 2007? What? Lies. Ah, considering how long it's been, it's crazy how little we actually know about what this episode was ever supposed to be. That same year, Newell did confirm that Gordon Freeman would be the game's protagonist in an interview with Eurogamer. He also indicated that there would be lots more content coming after that trilogy. Oh, but first you have to get the trilogy before you get that lots more content. Yes. So we've got a character. All right, great. Good start. As for the game setting, in 2007, head of marketing Doug Lombardi said the game probably wouldn't head back to City 17, instead continuing the trend of moving on to the surrounding world and beyond. Later that summer, in an interview with Rock Paper Shotgun project lead David Spare said that they were about to be very ambitious with the game, which is why they haven't released a trailer of it just yet, that their plans were already changing and that they didn't want to mislead people. There's actually a pretty hilarious new video put together by YouTube user Crobecat of all of the Few interviews Newell has ever done around the game, and right around 2008 is when things start to take a turn. That year, Valve announced that Episode 3 wouldn't be at E3, starting a trend of gamer disappointment that still continues to this day. We gotta start a tradition somewhere. Yes, the end. Marketing head Lombardi also indicated that the gap of Episode 3 would be longer than the gaps between any previous Half-Life game, something that remains true. Also, uh, at the time, fans wondered if that meant the game would be as far off as 2010, oh, if only. We were so naive then. In 2009, Gabe Newell spoke on the Steamcast podcast, calling Episode 3 a victim to the company's penchant for experimentation, indicating that they were still tinkering with the game on a major level. But hey, at least we got Left 4 Dead 2 that year, so that's something. Over the next few years, questions about Episode 3 were met with relative silence. That continued until 2012, when Gabe Newell basically spoke about the game in code to develop. In code? Yes, yeah, so secretive. Talking about an unannounced project called Ricochet 2, Newell said they wouldn't be talking about the game until they had something concrete to show. And that's... Well, really, that's been all we've gotten from the developer officially. Although, last year, in an interview with Jeff Keighley, Newell made a vague reference to Half-Life 3 as a classic product, one which they'd only revisit if a lot of people at Valve wanted to do it. You, you got, dude, you're two episodes out of three done. I don't think you need to be waiting. Yeah. I hate wait. More recently, we've seen the departure of key staffers like lead series runner Mark Laidlaw, which also does not bode well for the game. So, what we know after 10 years of development, really? Well, it's not all that much. There's also been some leaked concept art, lots of rumors and anonymous inside sources, one of which we reported on last year. But uh, again, we're only focusing on official word from Valve here. So this 10 year development time makes Half-Life 2 Episode 3 one of the longest running games in development ever. Before you go calling it the next Duke Nukem Forever. Which, well, that came out, so. Was, yeah, in development for 15 years. Things don't always end badly when a game has spent that long in the can. Well, for starters, Diablo 3 and StarCraft 2, which spent 11 
11 years and eight years in development, respectively. During all that time, Blizzard managed to cancel a whole ton of games, including StarCraft Ghost, RIP, and Project Titan. So uh, at least StarCraft 2 and Diablo 3 got the polish they deserve. Even Team Fortress 2, which is another Valve title if you're not familiar with one of the most popular games ever. Hats. Hats. <laughs> Spy Check was first unveiled in 1999 at E3 before its eventual release in 2007. So. Yeah, Valve's got a lot of practice with their old Valve time. Yeah, more middle of the road titles like Ellie Noir and Prey both received mixed reactions when they finally delivered. Ellie Noir was the result of Team Bondi and Rockstar's eight years of development, while Prey spent a total of 11 years in production. Then, of course, things sometimes do go the direction of the aforementioned Duke Nukem Forever, like 2008's Spore. Oh, Spore. Yeah, which spent eight years in development by Maxis and then was immediately forgotten about. It did, like, it was almost immediately. I got Hi. the day came out, was playing it in an airport. Hype. By the time I got on the plane, I was done with yeah. it. Yeah. Well, most people. Uh, the upcoming Final Fantasy XV has spent just as long as Half-Life in development. It was announced at E3 back in 2006 under the name Final Fantasy Versus 13. So uh, we'll see how that one does later this year, right? Yeah, a make or break for the series, they say. So, you know, no pressure. As for the future of episode three, we can really only guess. One of the things we concluded in the last year's story was that something more valuable than unit sales needed to be a part of Half-Life 3's eventual success. Well, now we have a prime candidate for that, the HTC Vive. It's possible, maybe, hopefully, that we'll eventually see a new Half-Life game exclusive to VR. I think that's what we're all dreaming, right? Yes. I mean, to tie the game to a new platform the way Half-Life 2 did all the way back in 2004 with Steam, so... It's a win win. Come on! <laughs> this would also help Valve turn the game into something new for gamers, something that we know they've really wanted to do with the game, given their former comments. An HTC chairwoman almost indicated as much in an interview last year before quickly walking those comments right back. However, Valve has also denied the game will be VR. But again, they've also said a lot of stuff, and they've lied. <laughs> really, we won't know until Valve finally decides to talk a little bit about it, if ever, and given the current state of things, that could be another decade. I mean, I hope, I hope not. Yeah, we I, really hope At not. this point, another decade might be optimistic. Please. So, what do you guys think about Half-Life 2 Episode 3's current development cycle? You hate it. Why would we even ask? Let us know in the comments. What development cycle? Uh, maybe maybe they went through that special time in their lives, got some hot flashes, and yeah. now it's done. There is no life cycle. <laughs> uh, for future speculation about mythical unicorn games, like this video and subscribe to the now. Thanks to Movement Watches for sponsoring this update. Movement Watches are made with versatility in mind because you don't want to buy a new watch for every occasion. Come on, that adds up quick. Yeah. If you're wearing brand shoes, instead you just switch out your metal band for a brown leather band. Bam! New watch. Yeah, I went with the pink band with the rose gold. Yeah, I did uh, I did the black watch face with the black band with the rose gold. Why do we both do rose gold? I don't know, because we're, we're ladies. Hey, yeah. if you want to watch your own, get 15% off your entire purchase when you go to mvmtwatches.com slash the no. You can be a fancy lady too.